Dragons are extremely powerful, magical, fire-breathing, flying tanks. But realistic dragons would be weaker and weaker. The more magical aspects of these creatures are peeled back. So today, let's take a look at why realistic dragons, even with all of their powerful abilities and intelligence intact, would be actually quite weak and be killed by a surprisingly large number of surprisingly weak foes and phenomena. And the first thing that comes to mind when we are talking about realistic dragons is how they fly and why flight would entail a pretty nasty disadvantage because birds are able to fly and they are just essentially flying dinosaurs, so they should be somewhat comparable to dragons. But they are able to fly because they have hollow bones that lighten the overall body weight. And they also have some air sacs within their body to further reduce their weight. And dragon biology might look a very, very, very great deal like bird biology. Their body might be different and scaly, but, but the laws of physics that need to be met in order to allow both species to fly, are still the same. So these hollow bones would make the dragons way more susceptible to any blunt forces, such as the warhammer of an adventurer, air collisions with, let's say, a flock of birds while the dragon is diving in flight, accidents such as being hit by rocks tumbling down from a mountainside, and of course, territorial fights between dragons. And this is especially problematic, since dragons without the ability to fly are likely unable to hunt as well. And since it would take a month or so for dragon wings to heal, the dragon might starve during the healing process or will be greatly weakened and thus be driven out of its territory even by non-dragon species. Not to mention that adventurers, knights and anybody else with a vested interest in keeping their hometown free of dragons and their sheep, livestock and people safe might actively employ this wing-breaking strategy as an extermination strategy. Set up a trap or ambush, break one of the dragon's wings, retreat, wait a couple of weeks, break the wing again, and after another couple of weeks the dragon might be dead, without an actual life or death battle taking place. Since, again, traps would be very, very great for dealing with very, very large opponents. The next point of weakness would be the need for high calorie diets. Most dragons would not be herbivores and likely stand atop of their food chain and prey on large animals, such as cows, moose, or something as big and meaty as these, meaning that in a human controlled environment, the livestock might be too well protected to be preyed upon since eventually, even if the dragon gets away with preying on the cows of Lord Baron Bloodhand, eventually he or his sons will either personally take care of the dragon and becoming a dragon slayer or just pay a group of adventurers to take care of it once the cost is getting too high. So dragons would, even if it takes hundreds of human casualties to achieve, be driven off or hunted to extinction in these human settled areas, which has been the fate of the wolf in many parts of Europe as well, for the exact same reason. Another major point of weakness might be the dependency on certain weather conditions to get their massive bodies into the air. The red worms of Mushoku Tensei, for example, have trouble returning to the mountains if they lack a suitable pedestal from which to get airborne. Once a dragon drifts off too far from their home, once it is far enough away from the mountains as to not being able to just drop themselves a couple hundred meters down until the air currents can provide it with enough uplift, the worm will be unable to reach an altitude of more than a hundred meters or so and face severe trouble catching food or avoiding ground-based predators. And their wings might be susceptible to strong wind gusts, storms or hurricanes, especially if they hunt over open water, either tearing their wings to shreds or making it impossible for days on end to fly out and hunt or seek out a water source would be very, very bad for dragons. Additionally, dragon fire might be just a chemical reaction, which means that these chemicals need to be consumed with food 
and it would likely take a lot of energy that could otherwise be spent to keep the dragon's body alive to refill and replenish the chemical gland that would allow the dragons to actually breathe fire a couple of times, making them even more dependent on frequent flights to the hunting grounds. Not to mention that any prey animals flown back to the mountains in order to serve as emergency rations, since they would be frozen solid in the permafrost climate of the mountains, might attract other predators. And aside from hungry adventurers, anything from giant bears to older, larger, or just hungrier dragons might show up at the dragon's very own cave, their place of safety. And worst of all, their low rate of reproduction would likely mean that numerous smaller predators or omnivores, such as rats for example, could lead to the extinction of dragons in entire regions, or at least to a severe decimation of their numbers, not because a rat could beat a dragon, but if hundreds of rats try to eat a delicious dragon egg, then one or two might actually succeed. And this might be all that is required to slowly but surely render dragons extinct. And with that said, now it's your turn. What are your thoughts about dragons being actually very weak and susceptible to a lot of dangers? Without their magic and their more traditional powers and resistances. Let me know it down in the comment section. And while you type, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to...